Yes, good morning. I'm Federico Gonzalez, the CEO of Ryzen Hotel Group. Well, good morning, and such a pleasure to see you today. Uh, we're back here in person for AHIC 2021, uh, the leading event here in the Middle East. Yes. How would you describe the mood among hotel investors currently? Well, I, I think the, the mood is increasingly improving. You know, I think uh, I was nearly two, three weeks ago in Berlin. I was uh, two weeks ago in London. And I think uh, as I arrived yesterday here and when I, when I look to the owners, to the investors, I think there is a, there is a lot of interest still in the industry. There is still obviously uh, expectations that some hotels may be uh, on sale in a given moment, but there is a lot of appetite, I think, to go into those, into those hotels. So I think overall uh, we should be prudently optimistic, okay? but I think the mood is good. Have the needs of investors changed during the last 18 months, two years under the COVID um, situation? Have, um, have your partners um, got more demands now moving forward? Well, I think, I think we, are, we are very fortunate. You know, first, I think uh, we have, when you look to our owner base, it's a very stable owner base and more or less with, uh, on average, we have here in this region, we have more than one hotel with uh, nearly any of, the, any of the owners. If you look across the world, we have between four to five with, uh, any, with most of, of the owners. So this is a very good relationship. And I think during the crisis, what we learned is to, to understand this is a joint business. Uh, I have to say, we had owners that actually, when the crisis came, came to us in a voluntarily way to say, guys, let's sit together. This is going to be difficult. There are others that we had to reach. Okay, But I, I think there is a, a, a true feeling of partnership. I don't think we have had any single owner with whom we have not reached kind of an agreement on how to cope with, it, with the situation. Uh, in, in, for example, in Middle East, I think it's very remarkable uh, that this is an area where, different to other parts of the world, like Europe, there was no furlough schemes okay, as rich or, if you wish, as comprehensive as in other regions. We sat down with some of the owners to try to, to find ways to, to help the employees. And I would say 95% or 99% of the occasions we found common ground. Okay? And I think that's what's important. At the end, this is, uh, we have had two difficult years. We had very good previous eight years, and we hope that we'll have the next 10 years Again, very positive with them. But there have been opportunities for hoteliers, for investment. Um, you signed a record number of properties here in the Middle East and uh, in Africa as well. Yes. So it's actually a brighter looking future. It, it is, you know, and I think we, we as a group have been extremely fortunate, okay? Even if it has been very painful during the last two years, we initiated a big change in the company in uh, 2018. That changed all the brands we, 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 we were selling, so we organized, reorganized all the brands, we changed all the standards. We became a much more flexible company. We brought solutions to uh, not only new builds, but also all the brands are conversion uh, friendly. Uh, and and we, we renewed the strength of many of the teams uh, in place. I think that gave us, together with the support of shareholders, huge change in operating systems, in revenue management systems, in IT systems. So we have been able to be extremely successful during the last two years. I mean, if you look at, at, at global level, okay, we have signed more than 250 hotels during the last two years. When you come to this region in Middle East and Africa, we have signed in the last two years more than 30 hotels. And this year has been a record high okay, with, with, uh, with more than 20 hotels. So, so I think it's like we, we are benefiting, if you wish, of bringing certainty and flexibility in terms of operations, in terms of revenue, in terms of solutions to many hotel owners who have either doubts about the brands they have or, uh, or doubts with whom to go in the, in the future. I think that's helping us a lot with the clarity of the brands, the operational promise, how flexible the brands are, but at the same time consistent in the level of quality. I think that's giving us uh, a, new, a new edge. Just think, for example, three years ago we introduced Ison Collection. We have globally more than 40 hotels, signed or open. Uh, we introduced Rise on Red three years ago. We had ne nearly 100 hotels in the world. Uh, and that means that the solutions we, we did were, were right. Radisson, that was not present in, 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 in MEA, was only present in, in, uh, in, uh, in the US, has signed nearly 100 hotels okay, in, the last, in the last two years. And then when you look to the future, beyond that, you, you have signed with our owners, with Jinjiang, a deal based on which we'll have around 1,000 hotels in China. Well, 1,000 hotels in China are critical for us to be one of the key operators in China, but actually it will have a huge impact into the demand of those level of 
Chinese traveler. So we're not talking about the economy travelers, we're talking about the business traveler or the leisure traveler that will buy a Radisson Blue or a Radisson Red or a Radisson Collection. So I think we are going to have, beyond the success or support we have had in the last few years, a uh, bit sugar on top with the potential support and traffic from the Chinese market. And just finally, two markets of interest here in the Middle East. I know Saudi Arabia and Morocco have been a particular focus for you over the last 12 months. Yes. What are your aspirations there? Well, I, I think if you look to the region first, I mean, we have today around 100 hotels in operation, around 70 in development, so that's 170. We want to reach to 50 by 25, by 25. And that means we need to focus in those countries where, I mean, uh, Saudi definitely is, is, is a very important area. Very soon in our plan we'll have more than 40 hotels in Saudi. What this means is it will be the country in which we have in a single country more hotels in the world, uh, excluding the U.S. So, so that means a, a lot in, in the importance of Saudi. Uh, Dubai keeps growing, but I think then if you look to Africa, I think, I think it's very important. Uh, Morocco, as you say, where we have now signed nearly eight hotels in the last, in the last years. Uh, Morocco is very important, South Africa keeps being very important, and Egypt okay, keeps being important. So both above uh, the Sahara and below the Sahara we have uh, huge, huge, huge potential. And as I said, you know, we, we now have, Blue is definitely the key horse, if you wish, it's our, it's our iconic brand that keeps being the number one upper up scale brand in EMEA. But I think second, we are complementing that with Radisson, okay, as I said, very successful. Uh, we are cons- complementing that with Radisson Collection. And then, from a format's point of view, beyond the traditional hotel, we have been able to bring service apartments, extremely successful. We are bringing, with very good success, resorts. That is also giving us a very significant growth. So I think we are complementing okay, where we operate, and that will give us a significant growth in the region. Well, it's fabulous to hear some good news, finally, after a difficult period. And I really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to you. Thank you very much.